beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes we plan them perfectly where we're like, after we go really hard, we just, we get the beach afterwards. That's it, all we have to think it's about. It's actually <laughs> not the best timing for us because, you know, we always have this like annual trip to the beach to see her family mm -hmm. in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, and honestly, going to sea level and spending a week down there kind of messes up with Kind of ruins fitness. us. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> right? It's like you got to sort of recover from the, you know, in terms of like your fitness. And totally. Back. Yeah. So, so sometimes it's not the best timing, but, but it was a fun trip. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you guys have other projects in the works for later this year too. So I guess, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And it, yeah, so it's hard. It, it's hard, you know, because my confidence goes way, way down when I spend a week at the beach. <laughs> Not oh, come crazy. on. Whatever. Oh, you should hear her talk. It's crazy. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. We should postpone until next year. Oh, oh ridiculous. No, I, don't think I can do it. Yeah. So <laughs> come on. So to catch everyone up that's listening, uh, Andrea Sansone just set the record for most 14ers climbed in a 24 hour period, right? Do I have that right? Yeah, you're right. And you broke the men's record as, as well. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember, I, I know I spoke to Eric Lee at one time and was he the last record holder or you, yeah. you guys would yep. know better than me? Yeah. And he did... 11 in 23 was it 22, no, 22 hours and 50 22 minutes, yeah. hours yeah. and what 50 minutes 50 and so 22 was, yeah. 50 he did 11 peaks yeah yeah okay. he was so okay. close because he was basically at the base of quandary and he had two hours and 10 minutes and so for him or not sorry not quandary huron he was at the base of huron yeah. when he was done and so he he had you know that was his potential 12th peak but he just had been moving a little slower on that last leg. And I guess he just didn't think he had enough, enough time to get up and down. So okay. it was close. Another okay. 20 minutes and he might have gone for it. You know, I'm not, I'm not mm. really sure. Mm. No, but he posted his splits. We had this thread on 14ers.com sort of following Andrea. And so Eric got on there and posted his splits. And looking at, you know, because he's got these detailed splits with like the plan, what's expected, what he actually got and stuff like that. And you could see according to his spreadsheet, he was really fast early, doing great. And then he wasn't quite hitting his splits on the last three. And so that's why I think maybe he didn't go for that 12th peak or something. But it was so close. It was so close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So, wow. Yeah. Well, how did this all uh, originate? How did this start? Where did this idea come from? Like, why did you choose this project rather than something else? And Andrew got to take a break on this one. It sounds like you were there to support crew. Yeah, I, enjoyed, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed it. But, you know, I did have, I, I will say, you know, it does give me, I mean, I've always appreciated the people that have supported me on some of my stuff. I mean, I have, I mean, I mean it's so important, but to actually experience what it's like, cause like I often, you know, with my sister, I get annoyed when she's like, oh, I didn't get any sleep. And, and I'll be like, I was gone for 15 hours. How did you not get any mm -hmm. sleep? Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but with Andrea, you know, there was a leg where she left and she, I knew I knew I had like three hours to catch some sleep and I didn't sleep either. Yeah. And so, you know, she's, you know, before I know it, she's coming down, I'm having to drive off. And now I haven't slept in like 24 hours and mm -hmm. I'm falling asleep trying to drive. And <laughs> yeah. so it's hard. It really is hard. Yeah. You know, Crewing so is hard. Yeah, yeah, it's no joke. Yeah. Crewing is hard. And sometimes yeah. it's yeah. even harder. Like, <laughs> of course, you don't have the, the physical efforts you're putting in, but actually planning the logistics, making sure you're in the right place at the right time the pressure of being there at the at the right time um yeah we're recording this on what is today thursday we're about to go out to the leadville 100 we're going to be crewing and pacing people out there and yeah just putting the logistics of everything together is is stressful so yeah. i i get it from both ends yeah, yeah so um it was interesting i did uh so in the beginning or I, it was th almost three months ago now um I broke, or maybe four months ago, I broke my foot. I was training. I don't really know what I had in mind training for it, just for whatever was going to come around this summer. And, um, and so I was out on North table running and I ended up breaking my foot and my friend Lisa and I had these plans. Um, oh, that's what I was training for. So my friend Lisa and I had these plans to do the Manitou incline. Um, we did it, I think we did it eight times last year but okay. we went up the manitou incline and then down the bar trail and so it took us like all like it took us all day and night to do it um 
I think we did it eight times. And wow. so this year we were like, let's do it 10 times. And so I was, I was like, okay. And we were like, well, maybe we could even do it 11. I don't know. So we were, we were kind of planning for that. And then, um, I ended up breaking my foot, uh, on a trail run. And she ended up doing, um, going to the incline and doing something with a bunch of uh, them down there, something called the inclinathon. And she mm. basically, it was, it's 13 laps in 24 hours and you have to go up and down the stairs. And so in my mind, I was like, man, you know, it's what I was training for anyway. It was really cool to hear that Lisa did 13 and 24 hours. And so I asked Andrew, um, there was the girl that had set the record, um, she did it 14 times. And so I asked Andrew, I was like, mm. you think I could do it like 16 times, you know, in 24 hours? And he was like, well, yeah, easy. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, well, I don't know about that. It's so, easy for me. I wasn't yeah. the one that was going to yeah. have to be going up the yeah. stairs, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, so I really, when I had broke my foot, I really started like tweaking my diet and really thinking, you know, maybe after my foot heals, I can train for a few weeks and do the incline thing. And so I went out to set the record on the incline and I ended up um, lapping it 19 times in 24 in like, Whoa. it was 19 times in 2336, I think was my final time. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. And I totally like it, it shocked. I didn't, really know that that was possible. I was consistent with my times. And so I really feel like that that built this really good base for me this summer. I mean, that was like 38,000 vertical feet, you, yeah, that's you know, one day, 24 hours. Feet one day. Whoa. And, so, and she was like, what was amazing about that too, was how consistent she was. Like she was just the same time, yeah. every single time, up wow. and down, mm -hmm. even in the night, same time. I mean, it varied a little. It did, you know. But, yeah, uh, there were a couple but, minutes here and yeah. there where it, I would either be faster or slower. I went between like 41 and like 44 minutes. And then my lap 15 to 19 were uh, more difficult. And so I was kind of sitting like 44 to 46 minutes in those in that in that range i think but but doing the math you know we had been looking ahead and yeah. been like hey, andrea you know you're gonna be able to do more more you know than 16. <laughs> and you know and 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 she was like ah oh, she didn't want to and i was like oh you're not gonna want to stop with time on the clock you'll never forgive yourself you know <laughs> right. so anyway i at one point i was like andrea just get it in your head you're doing 19. <laughs> You're doing 19 because you got time for it, you know. And so she'd come down and she'd cry, and I'd turn around and send her back up. And, you know. True, I would like yeah. like laugh like I think yeah. it was like 17, 18. I would just like come down and just start bawling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So so anyway, so so that was just after I did that. I'm like, wow, I I feel like I have a good base. I feel like my climbing legs are there, and if I can do that surely I can do something else really hard mm -hmm. and um I think she succeeded so well that it gave her a big boost of confidence you know for sure not planning on doing 19. no I had there were no did, there were no yeah. plans in my yeah. in my plan book and to so do she 19. came out of that with a lot of confidence yeah. yeah okay now let me stop you what month was this again um that was, that was May right the end of May. It was the end of May. And okay. so I, I think I it was like May 30th and 31st. I did that. Okay. And so you broke your foot before previous to that? I broke my foot. Um, it was four, it was like four and a half weeks before that I broke my foot. Whoa, and so, how does that even work? How, okay. So you <laughs> said you broke your foot, you tweaked your diet, and then you went and you <laughs> set the record on the incline. Like, how does that even happen? Like, <laughs> Like, first of all, I, I've got I've got this injury that I've had forever. So I got to know what, what diet this is that, that makes you she, she use her Monty Python voice to be like, well, it got better. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so no, really, like, how did you change your diet? And, and like, what did that training and rehabilitation look like? So I only had after so. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really depressing. Um, I remember going on my run, I was feeling really good on my runs and I was just looking at my watch and I turned around and I was on the ground. The next thing I knew I was on the ground and I actually was at the top of North table. So I had two and a half miles left and I ran it. I ran it down at my normal running pace. I thought that I could run it off, you know, but I, as I 
was getting closer to the bottom of the trail, I realized that this was more than just like something that I could just run off. So I got home and Andrew was downstairs in the basement and he was doing his own workout. And I was like, oh no, I, I did something to my foot. I know I did something to my foot and it was, well, it was like swollen and then it was bruised the next day. And so then I went in to like an urgent care and I got it x-rayed and he was like, yeah, you've just, you, I, I essentially crushed um, the, my, my small bone um, on a rock. I don't know. It was just, it was, sm it, it was smashed. And so um, I was in a boot for a couple weeks and then after a couple weeks, I went back to the doc and he saw significant healing. And he was like, well, you don't have to be in your boot anymore. And I was like, well, can I run? And cause my pain was a lot better. Um, and he was like, well, you can't run, but so I kind of took his advice and I tweaked it to, to make it my own, you know? And <laughs> so I was like, I just did what felt good to me. Okay. If I was in a lot of pain doing something, then I would stop. So I started off hiking and then I, I realized that I didn't need to be running to get in shape. So as long as I was hiking and that felt fine, um, it was my small toe. So it's, it only has, I think uh, the doc was saying 5% of your weight bearing goes on your small toe. And so, um, and so it's not like it was my big toe. And so I, um, so I was, so I went, I resorted to doing a, a lot of hikes on Mount Morrison and that um, is what I just practiced on. And when I got it in my head that, you know, the incline was a couple of weeks away. I, uh, I went down to the incline. I did six laps on it and I wanted to see how that was. And on my third lap, it, it was hard. And I called Andrew at the top and I was like, am I in over my head? Like this sucks. This is hard. My third lap was hard. And so I ended up doing six laps, but I called in my friend, Lisa, she brought me more water because I didn't have enough water and she lives um, out in Colorado Springs. And so I just, honestly going into this incline I just thought I was in over my head so I didn't really I I go into a lot of these things with no confidence I really didn't have a lot of confidence that I'd be successful um but I feel like once I'm in it the adrenaline kicks in and it's a this big mental game where you just get mentally focused and so during the weeks where I wasn't I was just letting my foot heal and I wasn't doing anything um, I basically changed my diet to, um, I just call it one ingredient foods. So anything, um, that just is one ingredient. So sweet potatoes, rice, beans, any vegetables, any fruits, um, egg, eggs, um, anything that's just one ingredient. And so I took out all of the processed foods and I just felt like that in the time I was here, like any time that I come out of an injury, I always come out of it gaining weight and being bloated and out of shape. And so I didn't want that to happen. And the only way that doesn't happen is if I don't gain the weight, you know, while I'm recovering. And so changing my diet and, and eating the one ingredient foods that I just stuck to, it really did me a lot of good. And then we did, um, I did a lift program from Beachbody and I just oh, focused I on my arms. Yeah, right. And so I just lifted yeah, yeah. weights. <laughs> right. You know, actually, so she forgot, you know, she didn't mention that she was in great shape when she broke her foot because like going into it so at the beginning of the year you know a north north table sometimes gets really muddy and it's not very pleasant to run on so you're kind of stuck inside you know like doing workouts and so she was doing you know and and man i mean we've been doing this for a long time good old insanity you know mm. from beach body yeah uh, and it i mean it is just brutal like mentally oh mm -hmm. yeah so for me i would do anything to yeah. avoid that workout yeah. i would go hike longs in a blizzard before i <laughs> before wanted you to did a, a one hour yeah. insanity yeah. Yeah. workout I mean, so i was going out running a lot and she yeah was doing we insanity. actually like, it, this yeah. this winter was the first winter actually ever that we did for about three yeah. months, we yeah. did completely separate workouts right. because I hate running in the mud yeah. and he hates insanity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to avoid insanity. And so, but, but, uh, but I, I know when I've stuck with it in the past, it's really paid dividends and she really stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So I think when she broke her foot, she was already in I did have shape, a good base. So she had a great base. So she didn't yeah. have to come from zero to get ready, mm -hmm. you know, in like two weeks for that incline mm -hmm. thing. 
and then sure. and then when she was injured she still never missed like we were doing like this it's kind of a wimpy beach body it's like this lift program it's it's good it's a good workout it's just not insanity thank goodness you know i mean it's like, just lifting weights yeah, i mean yeah <laughs> come on. Right. Sure. And so we sure. were doing that and then mount morrison was also another key um, which is ticket. so mount morrison's kind of near us it's um it's the mountain that overlooks uh, Red Rocks. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so any, anyway, it's kind of like the incline. It's a similar gain, like 2,000 it's an, Yeah, it's like a 18 to 1,900 foot gain in yeah. about uh, 1.8 1. miles, I think it is. Oh, wow, okay. So it's so steep. It's and, steep, yep. and, and, but it's crappy. It doesn't have stairs. It's loose rocks and, and stuff like that. So it's not quite mm -hmm. equivalent. But so we were doing that in the last two weeks leading up to the incline we did that like every day at least yeah once, right? yeah. yeah and so mm -hmm. i i really and we i really credit that like you know if i can do a mount morrison in like 36 to 38 minutes then i know that i'm my climbing legs are there you know mm -hmm. i like i like to see 36 minutes but i've only done that a couple of times actually so um if i can be anywhere in the range of 36 to 38 then i feel pretty good so that was kind of what i was gauging my fitness on, mm -hmm. you know, because I wasn't running because my foot was still, still healing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. I was still going through all of this. I didn't know how my foot was going to hold up on the incline. Actually, I, it was still broken. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was a little frustrating for me earlier too, just like ego wise, because here I had been running for three months, basically not missing a single day. And she'd been doing inside insanity workouts. Our first run together, she was faster than me. You know? <laughs> and, and so, so she was in, she was in great shape, you know, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. You know, so, so really breaking her foot, it really cost her like almost nothing. I mean, a couple of me weeks of cardio much, training, yeah. you know, wow. so she, you know, so yeah. Anyway. So okay. anyway, so that was, so anyway, so back in a couple of, I'd say it was like two or probably about two or three years ago. Um, I knew we knew about this um, 24 hour record. Oh, you know what it was? It was when um, this guy, Josh Sanders, he was, yes. um, he was like a Midwestern guy and he, um, he did 10 in a day. All right. Uh, okay. And, and he really worked that social media. Like I heard about <laughs> it. It was and, amazing. Yeah. I mean, that guy knew how to work it. Cause like everybody, <laughs> everybody like, on, knew. like I had, we had our neighbors who they didn't even really know that we were in the 14ers and they're like, did you hear this guy just climbed 14 ers in a day? And my first thought was, wait a second. I thought Eric Lee had already done that because Eric Lee had posted, you know, he had, but I guess Eric Lee had only done nine and, 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 and um, he hadn't really officially counted Cameron. So in my mind, he'd already done 10. So when there was all this fuss about this guy doing 10, I was just, well, I thought that was already, already been done. And so then I was like, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, I thought, Cause you know, there's all kinds of records now, FKT records, people are, they're just, everything's an FKT now. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of surprising to me because I've always loved the 14er record, you know, like just, it's, you know, been around, you know, the overall 14ers, how many, you know, um, you know, how fast can you climb all the 14ers? Um, but um, it, it just seems like a natural record to want to set would be the most number of 14ers in a day. And I'm just surprised it really hadn't gotten much attention over the years, mm -hmm. like, you know, and, yeah. um, and, you know, so, so anyway, yeah. yeah so, so then, yeah. so I yeah. guess a couple of years ago, um, we were, we were with our friends, um, Joel and Crystal, and we were all sitting at the table and, and, um, we were, talking about this record again and um originally I had plans I was like hey Crystal you want to do the 24-hour record with me and and so oh, yeah. we got excited about it. and then her husband Joel um he we had been Joel and I were kind of talking about how we were both kind of interested yeah. in it. and then he sneaks out he sneaks <laughs> out one day and he goes and gets it and he actually was really <laughs> smart about it because um he's more of a scrambler than a than a really a good runner okay. and so you know the typical peaks that are included in this record they're all the kind of the lame, well, what I refer to as the lame. I mean, I love all the, the 14ers in the mountains and stuff, but, you know, if you're talking about what your favorite ones are, it's probably not going to be Tories and Greys, you know, just, you know, Evans or and Beer Stat, um, right. LeBron, you know, these are just, they're the easy ones. They're just they're the easy them, they're, they're crowded, mm -hmm. you know, they're just never my favorite ones to go to. Yep. And if you look at the speeds, like, like when Eric Lee starts out and he does Evans and Beer Stat, that's so fast. So yeah. fast. It's like a, a 254 yeah like that blows me away yeah like yeah i think i did what yeah. what was my well your time was a 405 oh, 405 was, 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 but that no, during your record it was like a 445 yeah so, so my best time is a 405 there. yeah okay <laughs> So, wow. here, so those guys are moving because they're yeah. really runners first and foremost yep. you know and uh 
and 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 being able to do quandary in like two hours trailhead to trailhead like that's just i mean it's i don't know how they do it um but but so so uh joel was really creative because he's more of a scrambler so he started with the Crestone group, which yeah, is like five feet. Yeah, and he's fast. It's yeah, Whoa. yeah okay. and, and, and you know, and those are more technical. But yep. he did this loop. You know, he got Humboldt, Kit Carson, Challenger, Crestone Needle, Crestone Peak, and then he had his mountain bike there. So he flies down the road. Normally, it's time consuming to get up or down that road, but on the mountain bike, it was really fast. And and he was self supported. So then he just hopped in his car, drove to Decalibron, then he drove over, got. Oxford Belford, Missouri, and then barely made it down. And he got 11, yeah. you know, self support. Okay. So no okay. one was driving me. So that, and that, that time still, still counts. And, and right. that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to do those five mm-hmm. as well. But then <laughs> a friend, he did it. So I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just let Joel have it, you know. Yeah. And, um, but then this year, Challenger basically got demoted. I'm not sure. Are you aware of like these new LIDAR findings? No, I don't think so. Well, they, they they're demoted. They, what's that? It got demoted. What does it that mean? Well, it, it, it's not, nothing's official yet, but basically they are I, recording to yes. Bill Middlebrook. Yeah, in his yeah, site. yeah. Well, basically, I don't oh, even and, know and why. And the list of John, it's on the oh, list the, of oh, John. They, so updated. I think they've yeah. all updated. Yeah, so updated. I think it is official. I don't know why or this is being done or who's doing it, but like someone's got this super accurate way of measuring, like the, you know, the elevations yep. and like the amount of rise on peaks, and so. It turns out, you know, in Challenger was one, it wasn't really considered official for a long time, mm-hmm. and, uh, but, but, but it had 301 foot of gain. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it had the 300 feet that sort of basically to be considered a peak, you know, you're supposed to have 300 feet of, of rise from the saddle with your highest neighbor. Okay. And so 301 feet, you know, it counts, you know, so yeah. it's sort of been done. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, is a uh, North Maroon part of the Maroon Bells, yep. it's unofficial um for all these years you know but usually people do it anyway so it was sort of grandfathered in as an official peak well it turns out with the new data north maroon actually is official it actually does rise 300 feet so it's now an official one but challenger it, they were way off it was like i think i, I think i saw it was like 50 or 60 yeah. feet short Whoa. So and we're always thinking like duh we should have yeah. just looked at our elevation yeah. when we're up there i mean it, totally so now, yeah, yeah, I never thought to like, well, not that I ever really trust my altimeter yeah. that much anyway, yeah. but, but, uh, but anyway, so now, you know, doing, moving forward, knowing that you can't really count Challenger anymore for this record, because you can't count Cameron on Decalibron, so it's sort of like right. a Cameron, so I don't, yeah, so unfortunately, so that, that was out, that was but out. also at the yeah. same time, like, I, I, I can scramble well, but I don't think that I'm like a super fast scrambler so i think that you know i can hike uphill probably faster than i can scramble oh she would have been fine she um, would have been fine don't listen to her but <laughs> and then and then the other <laughs> trick is it's like this mountain bike i mean i had to be oh, fast on a mountain bike coming yeah. down the crestones road yeah, yeah, i mean that would have been hard. Yeah, I, sure. like i can mountain bike yeah. but i mean under yeah. pressure when i'm tired yeah. On a crappy road? That would I don't been know. She would have okay. <laughs> been stressed. So, okay. so anyway, we had to come up with another plan. And yeah. it's, you know, it's really not simple. Like, let me, I'll tell you the big flaw in the previous plan. So we told you about Joel's plan. You know, he did the Crestones, then he did the Calibron. So there's eight. And mm-hmm. then uh, Missouri, uh, Belford, Oxford. So there's his 11, right? Okay. And, yep. and the way he did Missouri was he did this drive to uh, Quohisi Lake, which is actually... A, um, you know, you have to cross this river and go up this bumpy road. So the drive takes a while to get up there mm-hmm. on your car, you know? Mm-hmm. So versus the other two guys that did 11 and beat Joel's time, but they were supported rather than doing the drive up to Clohesi Lake, they just started from Missouri Gulch. But so they have quite a bit further to hike an extra 1500 feet, but yeah. really it comes out as like a wash because Joel took an extra hour to drive up there. And in an hour there, they definitely cover that ground. Got but it. the biggest flaw I saw with the way they were doing it was starting at Missouri Gulch, going to Belford, and then you go to Oxford. Now you have to basically come back to Belford. And so there's like a lost half an hour right there. And that's right. if you're moving I mean, fast. they're basically resummiting. Yeah, maybe it's even mm-hmm. 40 minutes, you know. I mean, if you're moving more, more my speed or something. Um, so, and then you go over and get Missouri. So if, if like, he, if, if Eric Lee or the other guy had had that 40 minutes, I think all of a sudden Huron's doable. You know, and so there's just like just mm. rerouting it. it was like, how can we reroute this to mm-hmm. make this work? Mm-hmm. Sure. And, yeah. And so and and one of the things that and, and the other thing, you know, the other thing that's really interesting about this record is probably one of the impressive times was it was sort of set the unsupported version of this was sort of set on accident by this guy, mm-hmm. Joey Campanelli, who 
was flying through Nolan's at this ridiculous mm -hmm. pace. You probably remember that, you know, yep, 40 yep, hours. totally he just happened to do 10 in 24 mm -hmm. hours, you know, which is just <laughs> insane yeah. because he's going way down, you know, like it's not the most efficient way to get in 10. Let me just put it that mm -hmm. way. But with our experience on Nolan's, you know, we were thinking, you know, we were, we knew it, it, you have to, you know, it's like, you got to figure out how to include Oxford Gulf of Missouri in there. So really we were like, gosh, maybe we could do Harvard and Columbia. And, you know, and, 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 you know, Harvard and Columbia is not the easiest. They're pair. not. Yeah. They're not, the they're not a walk in the park. I mean, they're two the big peaks yeah. in Nolan. And then getting over from Harvard to Oxford is also not easy. Right. But Yeah. But, but, you know, I have been working on that Harvard Columbia traverse. I mean, four years. Mm. I mean, okay. I've, um, I think Harvard's up there. I think I'm 25 times like total up there. And nice. like, I've been scouting that traverse out four years. Like I've, done all variations I can think of on that okay. that thing and finally Joel he like took me out one day and he showed me his route and I was like man that was amazing because if you try to stay on the ridge like direct all the way you 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 know there's like class 5.7 climbing in there mm -hmm. you know in okay. this area called the rabbits and and sometimes there's a rope there I've heard I've never seen the rope never whenever I've it. gotten there I get to the spot and I just can't climb it they say it's five seven but I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable so trying to make it. We just go around so, and down. So we did find a way to just bypass that section, but still you're saving this huge amount of elevation dropping, you know? And so anyway, just as Andrea and I have been doing Nolans and stuff, we've really dialed in that route. Yeah. And, uh, nice. and so we've, we've gotten that into like a two hour traverse, but somehow miraculously we did it. In it like was an incredible. Hour 24 so we, we were doing so, this thing. Yeah. Wow. So before we, yeah. before we uh, did the, whole 24 hour thing um i was like well andrew let's go out and let's just do the columbia through missouri leg and because that's the leg that he was planning to do with me okay. um in the beginning and so we went out and in nolan's when we did nolan's together we did that leg in 11 hours 11 it was like 11 hours in like 50 minutes 11 50 for, for that section so then and our nolan's time was not bad oh, i mean we had a 53 hours. hour I mean, nolan's time. time and yeah. that includes like a yeah. three hour yeah. stop like if you add <laughs> right. up all of our stops yeah that's yeah. like hours uh, 53 hours it's so like cooking ramen and stuff like so that. so we have like <laughs> 50 hours of movement. but that one time. section where we weren't really stopping was so was that was that hours. was almost yeah. 12 hours so then on our practice day when i was like let's go out let's go practice this we ended up cutting down that time and we did it in eight hours and 15 minutes and we were like whoa and then um it was just absolutely incredible and this is what i'm talking about where the adrenaline kicks in and you're just feeling good you're on a high off your splits we finished that leg in six hours and 55 minutes and so wow. On the 24, yeah, I, so and it's, it's like, like mind-blowing. Like, I don't, I, I'm like, what were, were like, we even <laughs> doing in those? Like, like how were we five <laughs> hours faster? We must have just been napping around a lot or something. Like, yes, like yeah. what were we doing? <laughs> um, one of the, I think something that was awesome, like we thought to just bring like plastic bags um, and just put it on our feet to cross the river um, after we got down from Harvard uh, to Oxford. So, and so a lot of times, you know, cause I like to have dry feet. A lot of people are- Yeah, they, they just, just a lot of times the they just run through, but- and then now they got wet feet for the rest of the day and I'm just not someone that likes that. So it's always, you get there, you take off your shoes and socks, you go through the water, it hurts cause it's cold. And yeah. Then dry your feet off and so we, put everything on. It takes forever, yeah. right? right? So we right. bought trash bags, yeah. but yeah. we ended up actually not even needing to use them. And so we just, usually when we spend 15 minutes at that river, we literally spend three. We got water in our water bottle and yeah. we took off. And yeah. so, okay. um, and, and then we, you know, we just, I was just feeling really good. And so I love, you know, so we're going up yeah. Oxford and, yeah. um, and I summit Oxford and then Andrew. Oh, she he, loves to tell this story. This is my this favorite, is favorite part. part of it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't summit Oxford or Belfort with me. <laughs> you know, I was dropped. You know, I was dropped. But fortunately on those two, I can like veer to the side. Yeah. And she goes up and then she can join up with me. You yeah. Know? But we yeah, knew yeah. she was going to be faster. So we knew that was going to work Yeah, that's kind of how it worked yeah. out on our practice yeah. run. I think, what did you yeah. time it? Like for every yeah. thousand feet, I was four oh, yeah. minutes Yeah, faster, she was four right? minutes every thousand feet. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's actually, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're out there and she's gone, you know, when you're, she's eight minutes ahead of me, you know, yeah. it's like, I can't see her, you know, so wow. it's, it's a little demoralizing. 
Wow. Uh, but, but anyway, after we did the training time in 815, we started filling out the spreadsheet of, you know, we just needed to have some accurate times because originally we were like an hour short. Like, oh my gosh. So how are we going to, was, Andrea was really stressed. It was right? so scary. Like, like, like our, yeah, split, yeah. we were like, it's a pie in the sky number. There's no way that I can get 12. We yeah. were trying to pull these numbers out and we're like, yeah. how are we going to do that? And that was with us just sort of mm. guessing. It was like, we were guessing we'd be a little faster than mm. in Nolan's because in Nolan's we weren't fresh. And so, but we're still an hour short. So we had a lot of homework to do. You wouldn't believe the amount of homework that goes into this. It's like, yeah, for yeah. 24 really? hours, yeah. the amount yeah. of hiking and scouting yeah. and planning and yeah. figuring out how we're driving and where we're taking the ATV. And, and yeah. it's just an, like, it's just an incredible amount of work that went yeah. into it. And, and then on top of that, um, the night peaks, which it also like always has me scared on any project we do, like, you know, Nolan's coming up. It's just, you know, I have to be sure of myself on these night peaks and it's just, it's, everything's always harder in the dark. And so, um, so I, there, there were these nights, I think two or three nights we would go out and we would do Decalibra and Grays and Tories and, and just make sure that I knew, and it, they're so easy, but but in the dark, everything's different. Totally. <laughs> so, yep. And, and, and we did take, I did do a different route upgrades. And so I wanted to make sure that I had that route dialed, even though it was just a ridge all the way up, it's still like, okay, well, I still have to go through the willows at one point, you know, and I need to make sure that I don't miss that point because I was really stressed out about wasting time. I didn't want to waste one minute yeah. making a wrong turn you can't really get lost, but with, I didn't want to make a mistake. That was yeah. kind of what always really stressed me out. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what Ridge was that up Grace? Did oh, you just take that yeah. direct? Well, it's well, weird. So the, the Argentine pass trailhead, um, that's on the South side of Grace. Yep. And the reason we, we wanted that one, you know, honestly on the map, it's not that much of a saving. So, so basically you're at Decalibron, right? And now we're trying to get to Tories and Grays. Yep. And so we're trying to get there as fast as possible. And, you know, we did, we were able to borrow an ATV, you know, and the, the main place we used it was coming out of um, Clohesi Lake. Yeah. I kind of mentioned that bumpy road. Yeah, you know, I've been on it. So, yeah. Oh yeah. So instead of taking like an hour, like Joel did in his four wheel drive, um, like a, you know, you know, stock four wheel drive car. It was like, you know, we're down in like 15 minutes on that 18. Yeah, right? it was amazing. So, oh, that was crazy. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. You know, that's down the three miles. And then we we flew down, you know, to where the support vehicle was waiting way down by the lake, you know. So mm -hmm. so um, so we had that and and so we had use of that for uh Tories and Grays as well. And so, you know, I sort of I you know, I was trying to like map it out, you know, knowing it's gonna be night, so there's not gonna be a lot of traffic. And I thought we were gonna get like a 10, 15 minute savings by going to this other trailhead. You know, versus the other one, but that's how important every minute. Was. I mean, every minute was yeah. for us because yeah. in our in our projected splits, we had me coming in at twenty three yeah. eighteen. But that was if everything went perfect. That was if I was strong yeah. the entire time. I yeah. didn't slow up, and so our we, actual padded splits is what we called them. Where mm -hmm. you know, where in training she did a peak in like one thirteen. So we padded. We had two minutes. So let's call it one fifteen. Since so I've been going. You know, the padded splits gave her five minutes to spare. Five minutes. On this thing. Okay. So there wasn't a lot it's of breathing. stressful. Yeah, yeah. She was stressed, And right? so it was like, yeah. yeah. And so then well, there But anyway, was... let me tell them about the route up oh, Grays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the route on Grays was, um, so it's the Argentine Pass Trailhead. And it's it's um, it's um really a beautiful way to go for people that are hearing this, like to go do Grays if you don't want the crowds yeah. and you don't want the parking restrictions. It's, you know, you go through Keystone, you get really close to this town called Montezuma, and there's this sort of back way back there. And you'll see a few people back there on a Saturday, but it's not anything as busy as the other side. Okay. So it's, it's beautiful. It's in Roach's uh, book as well, but, nice. um, but yeah, so it's basically a dirt road. It, you know, it's like you follow this dirt road and it was one strategic spot. We cut through these willows just to cut off a big switchback. Um, and then, and then hit this trail, which is just sort of wide open grassy slopes on it joins up, you know, there's a trail there and it goes up this ridge line. Yeah. So man, I just yeah. and I remember going up that road on the ATV. I was so toasty warm. I had this huge puffy jacket on. Yeah. It's like a mountaineering jacket for like Everest. And like <laughs> and I had like pants and I was so warm. I like didn't want to get off the ATV. And so when Andrew's like, we're almost there, I'm like, no, I don't want to be almost there. You know, but 
you know, talking about time savings and how like we had, uh, you know, our padded splits only gave me five minutes. We found out that there was a road closure on our oh, way to, yeah. to Calibron. Right. And so yeah. now, and that cost us like 15 minutes. Well, no, it was like, well, well, eight, it was eight well, it miles. Was eight miles. Eight so miles. it was, so you know. if I'm going 60 the whole way, but there is a stop sign in there and we got behind this. Like, and there is some traffic. So that was yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so so I'd say about 15 yeah, minutes. Probably, yeah, 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 yeah. But but I will say we had been afraid because when we finished the first leg, our support crew, well, not our support crew, but people that had come to cheer Andrea on. Like uh, he he was like oh my gosh there's this like mile long yeah he wait scared us <laughs> to turn left because of this road closure mm. so we were like oh my gosh you know, like, what are we gonna, there's nothing gonna... we can do you know so but, we were just yeah, happy that yeah. we saved some time on the Columbia yeah. through Missouri leg yeah. and then we ended up yeah ended not up, hitting traffic cleared out it must have cleared out just before. Oh, lucky so okay that was great yeah. and um and so we ended up it was we couldn't even see the mountains they were just it was the rainstorm um, oh, yeah. when we were driving and mm. then um. And then we got there and, um, we, we had, we had some issues with the tracker, my tracker, you know, we've done these peaks so many times. We knew exactly where to start for the 3000 foot rule, right? That's like yeah. our, the 3000 foot rule determines where you start and end on these peaks, um, before you drive off to another set of mountains. And so, right. you know, exactly where you have to start, but my tracker was just not reading what it should have been reading. And so, you know, because it jumps around, it's bouncing around. So it's like reading that we're 200 mine, feet mine too was high. Great. Mine, mine was like, Hey, we're in the right spot. Just like we had marked with our, with our, yeah. uh, you know, like our waypoint. And so I'm and stressing I'm like, out because <laughs> I'm like, it's my it. tracker. This she's is what people see. The start message. Yeah. So she's stressing that the start message is going to show this elevation that's way too high. And Andrew's like, yeah. oh, well, they can just look at yeah. the map and i'm yeah. like well you know i just there's a lot of naysayers out there i'd rather yeah. just be totally accurate so yeah. we ended up go, according to my tracker we ended up driving back no way you are to, to where my I'm, track i was just driving backwards yeah. i was looking like yeah. speeding back it's and like, then like, 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 tell me okay what's your thing yeah. say what's your thing say what's your thing say and it just Finally, wasn't reading you know we got there you know it was like a half a mile down yeah. the road and, then, and i was and like this is ridiculous. so then she gets out she presses the start button starts going and then all of a sudden it's showing her being way too low so i was like well get back in the car <laughs> <laughs> back up and then yeah so finally hers kind of got ah, yeah, we just was, like we're pulling yeah. our hair out you yeah. know and then so <laughs> after all of this it was fine we literally wasted five ten minutes doing this and then and we're arguing and we're arguing yeah. and so then <laughs> at least after all of this the rain cleared up there was a beautiful rainbow we gave each other a hug told yeah. each other we loved each other yeah. and off i went <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah, was, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. so that traverse between columbia and harvard that's not something you guys normally do and your Nolan's route, is it? Oh, Do you guys well, normally? Well, now. now. It, it is, is now. now. It is like, now. Yeah. You know, like, so the, the standard route, you know, you drop way low. Right. And way low is not that low. I mean, I guess you get down to like 12.4 or something. Mm -hmm. but, and the nice thing about dropping low is there is this snow fill early time of year. Sometimes you can like slide down in your butt. But we did do um, that ridge um, in our Nolan's oh, in 2020. Oh, Nolan's. oh we, we did. did. In the dark. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, in we the did. Dark. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We did. yeah. Yeah, this, so that yeah, wasn't yeah. a that wasn't a stranger yeah. to us, but yeah. what was was trying to figure out how to get that in two hours because yeah. I think we did it in like a two twenty. It was like a two twenty um, yeah, on we Nolan's, and so down, yeah. and so we cut an hour off on yeah. the twenty four hour, which was yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. and I think wow. it's definitely credited to having the route dialed in. Dialed in, yeah, yeah for sure. Dialed in completely yep. now, and so yeah. you're not wasting any time. Yeah. And that was daytime as well, right? For the twenty four hour we were record. Fresh. Yeah, totally. it was our first, it was yeah. our second peak. Nice. So I mean, we okay. had fresh yeah. legs. Wow, wow. So that was that was great. Yeah, going like, and then and then of course every time you beat a split by a lot, Andrea's just like gets super yeah, gets excited. Super and excited. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> so right, this high yeah. along all day until yeah. of course until it goes until, away. until it's dark again and I get yeah. sad. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, Oh yeah. Oh, well back on that lake too. Yeah. You know, then after we're standing on Harvard and you know, uh, for me planning out my 14 er records or like no one's, I always thought getting from Harvard to Oxford in four hours was a good, a good like baseline time to, to go yeah. by. Like, mm -hmm. When I did that in winter, I was kind of sick. It took me like six hours, you know? Mm. And uh, like, I just remember like Oxford being so hard. 
but uh but i know we had done it a lot faster we'd been like 3 30 or something mm -hmm. and wow. uh oh i can't remember the exact time but we blew that away it was like i know it was like 15 minutes down, like an hour yeah. it was like 2 30 yeah or, we were or at less, like 2 18 2 2 2 18 or it was fast something. like uh, wow. we don't something's happened to yeah. us because <laughs> we don't normally go down fast <laughs> we've been going down a yeah. lot faster you know well i'm hearing you guys say run a lot more like oh, yeah. <laughs> In our, in our first conversation, you guys oh. both claimed, eh, oh. not really runners, yeah. we're really good hikers. Yeah, she, she, like, she almost was like ultra running is like a dirty word, but, you know, with her, she's like, oh, ultra runners. Yeah. You know, we don't run. Well, I oh, just, yeah. I, so, it, oh, well, but you know okay. what, Wait, I have a funny story. This is a funny story. So there was a book that's been recommended to me for years. It's about this guy who can take these freezing temperatures. Wim Hof is called like, yes. uh, what doesn't kill you. It's an amazing book. Like this, yeah. we're, we're yeah. listening it yeah. in the drive. It's yeah. like our belief system yeah, it's, it's like, amazing yeah. so but um but there was this one funny part where the guy goes into the cu center for sports medicine and you know you know they're gonna basically run some tests on him you know basically he's gonna try out this program he wants to see if, how much he improves so this is his baseline but when he goes in there basically he's talking to the guy and, and the guy tells him the leader of the place is like oh yeah we could tell from the second we saw you that you would never be a great endurance athlete and he was like well why you know what is it and it was his calves and apparently his calf muscles were too big. And so the guy explained to him that, you know, when you're running, you basically got these giant pendulum weights on your legs, you know, and that you're having to carry that all these other runners don't have to carry. So I can tell. But the funny thing, Andrea has these giant calves. And, uh, and so here she is. And she's amazing at this running stuff. So anyway, I just thought that was really funny. Well, it's I interesting know. because, yeah. you know, they help, I, on, the climbing, yeah, they know, help me on the climbing, yeah. which is yeah. so it's like you see these ultra runners that come out that all, you know, they come out last year and and, you know, they're really not much faster are on the uphills than than us but mm -hmm. where they get us is on the downs and so and it wasn't they, even close i mean they, they were just, just run really on fast on the downs yeah. and so and so it's but actually now that we've done it it's not like they're sprinting down now that we do it, it's just sort of like maintaining a steady sort of slow well, run yeah right down, right? Yeah, yeah yeah and so now that i actually have experience you know a hike jog a hike jog run on right. the on these mountains it's not it's it's just kind of letting gravity take your legs you know yep. if you 100 right? percent yeah. yeah and so it's but it's interesting like i was just on mount morrison the other day and i came home and i was like you know what andrew like i'm not meant to sprint i am not a sprinter like i am not meant to just run really fast in short periods of time you know it's just like i'm fast but i'm not like i i'd say i'm in like the upper one third you know but there are so many people that have these times of like going up mount elbert in like two oh, yeah, hours yeah, like a round trip Jim mount elbert in like two something. hours i'm like no that's like how do you do, how do, you that? do that how do From you run the standard route of the elbert in 216 round trip wow like, so it's just i have no idea so I'm, that's I'm just flailing to... reckless on the way down yeah, arms are flying so. <laughs> yeah, i know and so i'm trying i'm finding this sweet spot now where it's like i my calves are really helping me i mean going up columbia at, at, at you know we were really going at like a three thousand foot per hour pace i mean we had a really strong pace going up columbia and um and so i really feel like it's the muscles in my legs that contribute to that and then just trying to find this sweet spot of just you know just being faster on the down and just you know running where my legs aren't burning and my gravity's just taking me and once i've kind of tapped into that i really feel like that we've found this key to like um endurance hiking <laughs> you know yeah. and being fast mm -hmm. so, it yeah, sounds like I'm, it. I'm hiking faster than I ever have i mean she's faster than me right now but i've, I've never been able to stand mm -hmm. like this much mm -hmm. like you know it's just weird because we see okay three thousand feet that ah, would be a little less It'll than an hour like you know an hour yeah, yeah. so wow. and in the old days there was just no way you know i would just <laughs> i would never consider going that fast because i feel like it would destroy me for the next climb for sure uh, yeah so, so it's yeah. like these goals that we have and these numbers that were originally like pie in the sky numbers like yeah. are becoming reality and i think yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. totally cool totally cool well so okay so tell me the order of the peaks that you guys did yeah. this 24 hour project and i feel like the conversation has been bouncing all over the place oh, yeah, which sorry, i no, love yeah. no 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 i love yeah. it <laughs> sorry <laughs> i love no, it we'll just stick to answering your questions no, 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 no please no. you guys are great 
<laughs> but tell me the order of the peaks and I'm just going to try and mentally picture the routes as we're going oh, along yeah. here. Yeah. All right. So oh. I'll start with the and, first. Oh, and I'll probably interrupt her. Every yeah. Time she talks yeah. About yeah. <laughs> That's just how we operate. He yeah. tells stories much better yeah. than I do. I don't go into detail and he's yeah. like so detail oriented. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm like, Andrew, you've got to be on this podcast because he's so much better at like bringing things to life and talking about the details where I'm like, yeah, I just like 12 peaks. I don't no, know. I what know. else do you want to know? <laughs> Believe me, I can listen to you guys all night. Okay. So, um, so the first set of peaks. So we started uh, Columbia to Harvard. Wait, so let me interrupt here. <laughs> so that's actually a big part of the strategy yeah, right there yeah, big was part. because, you know, Columbia, Harvard, actually, if you were say, on the clock for Columbia, there's like, it's like an hour of just the trail just to get up to the right spot in there. Right. So, so that's very strategic is starting with Columbia because you can be off the clock hiking in until you get to that 3000 uh, foot spot. Okay. Okay. And so, so then, and because of that too, we ended up, you know, we do this little, it's kind of like a route that's common in Nolan's, which is like this ridge that comes off of Columbia. I don't know. It kind of points right at Yale. Mm -hmm. It's not the standard route. And, uh, and anyway, it's this beautiful ridge with a little bit of bushwhacking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so anyway, so you sort of, we took our time, got up there, yeah. get into position, get dialed into the right spot, argue a little about exactly, yeah. are we in the right yeah. spot? Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so that was, yeah. So Columbia. So then, well, and, yeah. and what was yeah. cool going up Columbia was that, um, so when we had practiced it before, there's this immediate 500 feet of just bushwhack and to the right of us, Andrew's like peeking over. He's like, well, it looks pretty clear over there. And I was like, ah, let's just stick with what we know. And, and we were, and then in the, the end, last second, yeah, I, at the we last second, like, oh, the we were let's like, let's, let's do it. You know, and screw it. Was it. Beautiful. it was amazing. Yeah. It was, I mean, just yeah. 15 feet to the right and yeah, we wow. didn't push back at all. So I really, that yeah. was really key to, um, I think some of our good time too. We didn't spend so much time just in this thick bushwhacking, but, um, so Columbia to Harvard, and then you drop down, um, and then you cross over the Creek to Oxford yep. and then you hit Belford and then Missouri. So okay. that's the first leg. And Missouri is another one where we had like just what to me is like just having yeah. done Nolan so many times and stuff. It's a spectacular time, like 50 minutes from Belford to Missouri. And that's also mm -hmm. just like Harvard to Columbia. It's just taken years of us trying all these different routes. Yeah. Finally got it dialed in like that East Ridge of Missouri. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, there's yep. about a billion different possibilities in there as far as routes, you know. Yeah. And, for sure. Uh, we finally have a route that we really like and we mm -hmm. just, you know, zoom, yeah, you know, zoom up what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Crushed so, it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so from Missouri, Missouri down, we had a great time. What yeah. was it like? 50, 50, 50 minutes again. Yeah. Like to get 3,000 feet. Yeah. So it yeah. was just really, really yeah. fun. So um, now we're done. Now we're done. And we're at the Cohesi Lake mm -hmm. uh, trailhead. There's like a parking lot down there. Yep. Um, all the Jeeps sort of park. And so we, that's where we had stashed. Cool. And we ATV. rode down the, yeah. yeah. And then we, yeah, so this was the ATV was stashed previously. You guys oh, we, drove we it up there or? The before. Yeah, we drove it up there. Well, so we had to go borrow it from um uh that's kind of a long story, but man, this this guy let us he works on search and rescue in Salida and he let us borrow this thing. And it was beautiful because I was just picturing uh, you know, ATVs I'm used to, which is usually like first on the back would be kind of on this like great this great and they'd be bouncing around. It wouldn't be super oh, yeah. this ATV had like a throne on it, like on the back. For the oh, passenger, wow. this okay. big padded seat with these big handles to hold on to. So yeah. it, was it was perfect. perfect. It was perfect. Was yeah. Amazing. Yeah. He was so awesome. Yeah. For we were like, we owe yeah. you a lot of beer. Yeah. That's our thank you to everybody. We just oh, yeah. buy them yeah, beer. Totally. <laughs> so so we had sashed out the previous day, and of course. Um, you know, Andrea is worried that someone's going to steal it. You know, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like, not going to be there. Someone's I, like, like, I always no have to have find something to be anxious yeah, about. They, they down? Like, you know, there's still like, I have, you know, so yeah, anyway, so she was worried that that wasn't going to be there, but so that was ready. And the funny thing is, you know, we, we had, uh, we got hailed on like on Columbia. There were these huge rainstorms to the South and to mm -hmm. the North, but we'd sort of dodged them all day. Mm -hmm. And so we made this, we did drive down to this Creek crossing. And then we got on the road and we still had to drive down to Clear Creek Reservoir on the mm -hmm. dirt road. And then we just got hammered by this rainstorm. Huge. And, uh, and like there oh, were yeah. cars driving by nailing us. Oh it my hurt. gosh. Yeah. You know when a car hits a puddle and it splashes, right? Yep. yep. Well, I, mean, I was going like 45 miles an hour on that ATV. I was, it was a little squirrely if you want more than that. So I was a little scared. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> like at 45, when that splash water hit my chest, 
ouch that <laughs> i know it, it, it was sticking my legs man it was I it was painful i swore very loudly yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yes and, oh and meanwhile andrea was basically wearing underwear for her whole leg and so she hadn't wanted to stop and put on a jacket so she's back there freezing <laughs> freezing through this rainstorm oh man yeah, yeah. so so then from there um yeah so, so for, yeah and there we did the drive we kind of talked yeah, about the we drive did the, we, were worried we, about we had to take a detour delay. yeah so now she's got to do the calibra yep so she okay. starts you know down down the road from kite lake to satisfy the three thousand foot yeah rule. so it's it's yeah. two is it two miles two miles i think like that? Yeah, yeah it's like two miles down the road from kite lake um okay. and and i've never i didn't practice it in the light so it was really cool because we were so far ahead of our splits um i was able to summit democrat and get three quarters of the way up Lincoln in the light. It was awesome. Mm. Um, it only turned dark on me when I was almost at the summit of Lincoln. So that was yeah. really cool. Um, I was like, wow, it's so different up here in the light. I can actually <laughs> see where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was cool. And then, um, so we did the Decalibron loop and then I came down, uh, met Andrew. It, it was really cool at that point. She was right on schedule too. Mm -hmm. So before we had been crushing our splits kind of, yeah. you know, but now she was like really hitting them within like, like yeah. Democrat was the only split where she was exact. Mm -hmm. Like it was exactly mm -hmm. what we predicted. Mm -hmm. And then, and then she got over to Lincoln. It was like within a minute or two. And so I was talking to this guy, Riley, who had showed up and was taking some cool pictures. Yeah. And stuff. He was like our cool videographer. We'll have to yeah. talk about him too. And, uh, yes. and I was like, Oh, well, in another, you know, minute or two, checking the watch, you know, she should be poking up there on Bross and bam, there she was, you know, there's <laughs> wow. a light you know yeah so I think, she was really I, yeah going, and i think that's pace. what's been pretty awesome like this year about you know when we put our splits together like they've been accurate you know it's mm -hmm. it's not like i i haven't been swaying too much from the splits that we put together so i really um appreciate that i mean heck i could beat my splits all day that's great but at least i'm not behind my splits you know yeah. Yeah. Um, except, I mean, there was, we'll talk about, um, beer stat later, but, um, so then after Decalibron, then, um, we drove, uh, and we did Grays and Tories, okay. uh, like, uh, we went to Arginine Pass. Yeah. And now it's the middle of the night. And so she was saying, you know, we, we use the ATV for this four mile just to boost our time there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's when she, you know, we loaded her up with all the heavy, you know, warm yeah, gear. Yeah, my to warm, keep her warm jacket. On the it was, ATV. it was great. Yeah, um, but, her off on her own. but with that yeah. being my eighth peak. Um, eight, nine, ten. Oh, my ninth peak, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Grace was my ninth yeah. peak, and and in our practice splits, um, I was usually nailing that like an hour and a half. I was up in like a one nineteen, so I was still beating my splits yeah. on my ninth peaks, which was so awesome. Like I came down from Grace and Tories, and I was like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun, <laughs> you know. And then um, and I had a Lisa, my friend, that always meets me in the middle of the night on all these crazy attempts um she she, she was, drives let me just say so she drives up from colorado springs but drags along some boyfriend <laughs> hikes up to the top of grays knowing that it's basically going to be go andrea <laughs> right <laughs> you know i mean so anyway she put so in a lot she put in a lot of effort yeah. to boost my morale yeah. which is just awesome like i mean i just love her she's so yeah. great um so then uh from there we drove to oh, and I might interject at this point too mm -hmm. that like so when she was on the Calibron, I was sort of trying to keep the uh, you know up to date on 14ers.com and stuff like how she mm -hmm. doing and then man looking at the time I was like kind of kicking myself because like we didn't have a plan for 13 peaks you know I mean our our padded splits we had five minutes to spare but now you know we had just blown away the first five peaks we're doing great mm -hmm. but really there there may have been time for a 13th peak you know wow. and so the question is well if it was yeah. in my head that i yeah. was so it wasn't in it my wasn't head in the plan. so there was i was kind of mentioning this to her you know i was like hey you know whatever and i was like, like no laundry, you know or <laughs> like, no i don't want to talk about it and I the like reason <laughs> the reason is is because you know basically it's risky right because if so the way that works is if you're on a pair of peaks like with the three thousand foot rule and this has never been tested in the court of law, right? <laughs> like right, it never right. But, uh, so I don't really know, but it seems we don't want to test it. <laughs> theoretically, if you're, let's say you're finishing with Tories and Grace, and they're they're like your 11th and 12th peak, and you you do Tories, and now you've done Grace, okay, and now you're headed down, and you don't make it down in time. Okay. So now you never descended 3,000 feet from either Tories or Grace. So 
I just know, you know, so I, I know you could argue that she completed grades the minute she started going up Tories, but I kind of feel like you have to get 3000 feet down. So you wouldn't get credit for either peak. And so you'd be back at 10, mm. you, know, you know what I mean? So it's risky. So she didn't want that stress because if she had say, like, you know, Eric was able to pull off a quandary in two hours. So suppose magically she had pulled off quandary in two hours. It just would have been so tight and so stressful at the end that she wouldn't have wanted. And that. I yeah. hate that. So we'd have to plan. I, <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so it was it was crazy because then our last set of peaks is Beerstadt and then Evans. And uh, I never planned to do Beerstadt. Uh, to do the sawtooth in the dark. I, I knew that I would possibly do maybe a little bit at the beginning of Beerstadt in the dark, but then it would just get light on me. Um, but the it, sawtooth is the ridge between Beerstadt and Evans, mm -hmm. you know, in the first half of it, you know, it's, you know, there's different ways to do it. You can stay on a ridge yeah. and it can be more technical. You can go down more of a loose goalie. Anyway, just in the dark is confusing. We've done several different routes and Andrea just like, ah, you know, she didn't want to lose a single minute. Right. So yeah. she was really stressing. I, it's like, about it's like I don't like, want to lose a minute yeah. looking around. I just right. want to go. Right. And, so, and I'm, I'm thinking, ah, you got two hours. Yeah. It's going to be fine. And, you know? <laughs> like, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. And so, so, so I knew that I had a lot of padding. I had like, I think it was like six hours to complete yeah. these two peaks. And I, and I previously did it in four. So I was like, okay, well, I know I have time. So in my head, that was kind of like when I had mentally decided, like, I'm just going to take my time up beer stat because I want to be in the light, you know, to go mm -hmm. across to Evans. Like I want the sunlight. Yeah. And so I kind of, I hit a low there. Um, That's where, you know, we were, we, you know, our style that we chose was supported, you know, so if we had our act together, we could have assembled a team to sort of mm -hmm. where there was always somebody with her, you know, if you can find people that can keep up, cause that's not easy. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it would be ideal if you could find people that keep stay with her. Cause you know, just to keep her mentally happy, like you said, you're going to be pacing Leadville 100. A lot of times mm -hmm. that's just keeping those people, you know, you're just there for company. Right. Totally. Well, she needed that there. And, yeah. like, you know, and she so needed, it would have been great, man. And what could she have done if, you know, people were there carrying her pack and were there with her the whole time? Yeah. I mean, I just needed, I needed a moral amazing. boost and yeah. I didn't, I didn't have that. So in, so I had planned to run like, a lot of beer stash just flat before you even start climbing. So, so I had plans to run that and I walked it all. And then I had plans to, you know, take some shortcuts and I didn't take any shortcuts. And so, um, I got to the top. Usually I get up there in about my fastest is like a 125 from 3000 foot, but, um, my average is about a 130. I got up there in like a 153. And so I knew that, you know, that was my only peak where I really lost time on my split, but it didn't, I didn't, care too much because I knew I had the time and I was kind of like meandering around on the top but and didn't you say after when you were done didn't you say there you were actually still doubting whether you could make it I, I thought you I were was kind of doubting. I was doubting yeah. Yeah. yes and so I knew I had all this time I was more I I was doubting there um I was really more so doubting kind of when I was three quarters across the salt tooth I was okay. like oh my gosh do I even have enough time to get to Evans and down mm -hmm. I don't know and mm -hmm. and I, my brain was tired so I couldn't really think about my splits I was trying yeah. I just couldn't put the numbers together to make sense and so 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 after I came up from the salt tooth that was like when sunrise hit the sky was beautiful the colors were coming out and I was like okay so made my way across to Evans and then um Riley our photographer he was he was there and I was like oh my gosh somebody that I know yay <laughs> you know I was really happy and I was and yeah, he gets all the love and she's <laughs> like you left me no so she told me yeah because I had to leave her on her bed <laughs> I left her when she was I low. was like you yeah. left me yeah. <laughs> he was like well that was the plan <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so you left me but no anyway so so he um took some pictures up top and then and then I had four out I had I had three hours to get down three hours to get down and my I usually get down in an hour and 15 and so it's crazy I knew I had enough time but somehow I was thinking I didn't have enough time and so I'm stressing out you know on the road I'm running and then I'm starting to go down um to the to the lakes and I'm like do I even have enough time and and then I realized that, you know, I do have enough time. And, yeah. you know, as I, as I was finally, I didn't, I mean, 
there's a section on the it's the Chicago Lakes Trail where the there uh the trees just kind of open up and it was only there and there I'm like about a half a mile from where uh, the 3000 foot rule is and it was only there where I was confident that I was going to finish <laughs> <laughs> I mean crazy like what it takes for me to have confidence is in is ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> now so, if I, if I, what's that if you had done a 13th peak which one would it have been Oh, well, there's a couple of options yeah. there. So, gosh, we have again, three options. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, okay. well, there's so many options. You know, there's actually, when you start looking at this, there's a lot of options. And mm -hmm. so it's really interesting. Pretty you know, ones, I think. Yeah. And like, so for example, I mean, Huron you know, would have been an option, right? Huron is an option because, yeah. and because Huron, you know, you're right there. You're at Clohesi Lake. It just starts up, it's 3,000 feet. You yep. know, it's right there. So that one is an option for sure. And you could just do up and then down the same way. Or you could go down to the other side. Uh, you wouldn't have a rough road. Yeah, there's a lot of things to think about, though. You'd have to, like, not only calculate the the uptime, but then, okay, the time for getting down either side. And then yep. how much driving time would you save by coming down to the other side? You mm -hmm. know, it's a smoother road, but then, you know, maybe you lose the advantage of the ATV. So I don't know. There's some calculating there. And the reason that one, to me, isn't number one on the list is because it's just rougher. It's more rugged, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so that that so so another option that people were kind of speculating about was uh, online was like, well, Sherman, and and I guess the reasoning yeah. is like, you know, you could like drop her off on the Leadville side, she could go up and over Sherman, you could pick her up on the other side, and then you could drive okay. to the Calabron, so it saves yeah. your driving time there. Yeah. But the problem with that one in particular is that it does require driving time. You know, so mm -hmm. now we're one offing a peak yeah. and it requires a drive to it. Whereas Huron is right there. So, yeah. you know, so I just feel like Sherman's kind of out, you know, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but again, all these, you know, if you really studied them hard, you might find something that you, we might be missing something, you know, mm -hmm. another idea. It was doing in the opposite direction, yeah. oh, right? So yeah. starting on beer, starting yeah. on Evans and Beerstadt, oh. and then we would do everything in the opposite direction. So then you come down Columbia, if you have enough yeah. time, then go get Yale. And the nice uh. thing about this option is now your last peak is a single peak and so you're not risking losing credit for two peaks yeah so you just try yeah, you so try you just go for it you just go for you it just mm. go. like okay. eric lee he had two hours and 10 minutes to teach here on you know maybe he should have just gone for it maybe he would have perked up i don't know but just the fact that you've just got a single peak at the end that's nice it's you know? comforting to know yeah. that your yeah. your efforts on yeah. the previous peaks won't be lost but the problem with that one is that you from where the clock would stop on columbia you have to go down another like 500 feet and then going up hot yell that way it's like not simple sucks yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to really figure that out and then the other, the other one the last one quandary. is quandary and the beautiful thing about quandary is that it's right off the road so really you can sort of think of that one as like the huron like no driving time because mm -hmm. you're already driving past it on your way from decalibron to tories and grace so it's right there and um and so, and it's like, bam. So, mm -hmm. so, and that one, I just, well, there's two options there. You can take the standard routes, you know, mm -hmm. which is a nice, pretty nice trail. So, you know, it's smooth. There's less rugged in Huron. Although Eric Lee's route was like this Monte Cristo couloir, I think, or there's some couloir that drops off the South side. It's just incredibly fast and steep. Mm -hmm. So I just, it, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, you know, uh, what would be the best for, for Andrea yeah. there. Yeah. But anyway, so there's, those are a lot of the options, mm -hmm. you know, we're looking at, you know, there's, wow. there's a lot. who knows, maybe there's mm -hmm. something we're not thinking of, you know? Yeah. Sure. Sure. hundred yeah. percent. Wow. How did you celebrate? 24 well, hours. Oh. You're exhausted. Oh, you know how she got to celebrate. Okay. This is how she got to celebrate. So, well, we met her there with like four people. We were all waiting there. And, you know, so actually we, we barely got there. We got there and then she showed up. So and then, like celebration, and, uh, you know, and so then we had the, and then the, the unfortunate thing about that endpoint is you have to hike out like an hour. You know? <laughs> it's true. And, and, and I was that, like, I don't want to like hike. This, and there's this like 300 foot climb with all these switchbacks mm -hmm. to get back out to Echo Lake, you know? Oh, so yeah. that's kind of lame. It's so, annoying. So we hiked out. Oh, and Randy, one of the guys there had like left his pack. And so we got all the way down to like, you know, the, the first part of the trail. And then he's like, oh, where's my fanny pack? And I was like, oh, so I volunteered to go get so it. So I didn't even hike <laughs> no. up with Andrew, and he was so, the only one that oh, yeah. I wanted to oh, see. So, well, so then I went to go, and then on the way back, I thought I'd be sneaky and find this cool way to switch, 
skip that climb and then i ended up bushwhacking oh, it was a nightmare but uh but anyway andrea so she gets back and i want her just to go home with like our friend sydney she could drop her off mm -hmm. at home she could sleep because still we had to go return the atv wash the atv buy beers and margaritas for the guy and return the yeah. trailer return the trailer which we'd rented from u-haul yeah and, and so anyway but Andrea I was, was like, that she's but come i was like i'm not yeah. gonna just yeah. be like okay yeah. bye. i mean yeah. he got no sleep last night yeah. i'm not gonna just be like okay you put all this effort into supporting me and you know I, and um um andrew's uh brother-in-law dave uh was there as well and he was just as amazing i mean he put in just as much of a sleepless night as andrew did um and i mean riley too i mean i think you know the the main people that were out there really they were amazing but um but i just felt bad i'm like i'm not gonna be like okay peace i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna sleep and you have to drive <laughs> but, but I, I he's been, so bad at driving I, when he's I, tired i was determined i was gonna do all that driving on my own yeah. right? and let her sleep right but sure enough after we dropped off that trailer Heading home, but you got two hours left, and I'm just nodding off. And yeah. I'm tired. So Andrea drove <laughs> drove all the way home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your celebration. So, yeah, she got to drive so, home. So, but but we ended yeah. up, you know, we had these grand. So then we went to the grocery store, and you know, I after these big attempts, there's always like this little window where I kind of fall off the bandwagon and I just eat like Foods really with, bad. You know, two ingredients, yeah. right? No, yeah. not, not, no, not true. We are vegetarian. So it's not like we're going out for a hamburger and French fries, but we're going out for like, you know, you know, I don't know. So what throw a little we... bit of dressing on that spinach, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what we got. What did uh, we oh, get? Oh, did we get a cake? Oh, did we, we got get... a cake. Oh, did we get... Ooh, we... nice. Yeah, yeah we got, like, we a, got a cake, cake and like, yeah. I don't know no. some pizza or something oh, I don't know awesome but, okay uh, but and then we ended up you know I you know we needed to shower so ended up coming home showering and then fell asleep on our bed like without you know anything else at like 8 p.m and so that was it I woke up at like three I had to work the next day so I woke, I woke oh, up oh come like, on yeah <laughs> so I woke up at like 3 a.m yeah. and I was like oh crap I didn't set my alarm clock so oh, yeah. so I you know I set it for like 6 a.m you know so <laughs> oh the things we do to ourselves right <laughs> so I've been there though I've done this crazy stuff and then have to go to the work the next day and it's like yeah yeah. not very pleasant well, but and it wasn't our original oh, plan for me to do it when i had to work the next oh, day but yeah we were avoiding weather we were right avoiding weather so yeah. we we yeah, were we talking to chris back. tomer about the weather and he's like look we had him over um him and his wife over for um is he for, the meteorologist yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. he's our go-to uh yeah. meteorologist Andrea just like yeah she says so, so, we got him on speed dial like, uh, <laughs> you know, how's the weather gonna be yeah this yeah over yeah, yeah he's amazing <laughs> yeah. so we credit he him he hasn't told us to stop calling yet yeah so yeah yeah he doesn't think yeah. we're annoying yet i don't think so <laughs> so we had him and his wife over and we were just like eating dinner and i was like hey we're gonna try this 24-hour record on Friday. And he was like, no, you're not. He was like, there's a huge monsoon surge on Friday. So mm -hmm. you're not going to do it then. And so we're like, oh, well, can you tell us when we we're going to do it? So he was kind of in the loop and having, helping us dial in. Uh, I had four days. I didn't really have a big weather window. So yeah. he was like, well, you got to do it Sunday and Monday. Cause that was it. And I mean, I had worked on Tuesday, so I was like, I guess yeah. I'm just going to suffer. Wow. <laughs> 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 And this isn't it for the year. Um, I heard uh, rumors of another Nolan's attempt coming up this summer. Well, yeah, it's funny because afterward, you know, I hear I'm running all these numbers. I'm like, we did those five peaks five hours fast. Yeah, it's crazy. Plus, you know, and then I went and I was, you know, I, I had to calculate how much time we stopped at all of our, because we, when we did Nolan's, we were self-supported. And so there was one 50 minute stop. And, uh, you know, because, you know, Andrea really wanted ramen. And so, yeah, so we, a couple of times we cooked ramen and mm -hmm. there I was so tired. She was cooking ramen for me and I was just laying there. And so we, we knew we had that 50 minutes, but when I calculated all the stops, you know, I had forgotten about this spot on Albert where um, we had our gear stashed and, um, and I couldn't find the box. I think I remember telling you about that. So I was oh, yeah. like, I'm looking for the box. I think that ended up costing us like 28 minutes, like in there, that oh, stuff. Wow. So when I added all these stuff, it was like three hours and eight minutes. And so theoretically with fully supported, you know, she's going to come in, like, we don't have to like worry about filtering our water. Someone should have the water for her. You okay. know? So obviously she'll still need to stop for a few minutes. So it's not like that three hours and eight minutes is gone, right. but I feel like we can make these fast stops. And so I feel like there's almost a free three hours there 
Mm. As long as we are dialed. As long right? as we're efficient, yeah. right? Yeah, free, almost free. You know, it'd probably be more like 245. Maybe, yeah, yeah you know, she's, yeah. she's going to stop for a few minutes. But um, but so that, that's free. She doesn't have to be faster. And now we start looking at like how much faster she's descending everything mm. this year. And it's just like, I'm just kind of like, holy crap. Like, I feel like she could do this amazing time. But she wouldn't let me talk to her about it at first because she was like, oh, I don't know. You know I was like, no, I, I was, but, Nolan's was, so Nolan's was, was so, gone and done. Yeah, I was, I so was, I was, that was, book was closed. So that, when that. I started to explain these numbers to her, I think after a couple of days and she was feeling a little better, then she kind of got excited about the idea again. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so, but it's a lot of work because she really over prepares. Like I, it, you know, all the time she does Tories and Grays to get ready for, you know, Tori, right. like, you know, like she did them a lot and the, the beer stat and Evans, you know, she did those a lot. So for her to want to feel comfortable and, 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 and I'll tell her, I was like, well, you don't actually have to know the route. That's the whole purpose of having people with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. If we can find people with her, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and uh, so that but would be at the, the idea. same time, yeah. I don't like, I don't yeah. like that idea. Yeah, like yeah, I, I, I need yeah. to like, and, and I mean, we've, yeah. I mean, okay. I've done yeah. these routes over and over and over. Yeah. It's not yeah. like I'm a stranger to yeah. the Nolan's yeah. route. I know the Nolan's route, but I'm talking about like, the the spots here and there where i don't i just want to be confident in the dark right yeah. i want to be confident in this it's not it's, she wants to know it in her own head where yeah she's going. she doesn't yeah. want to trust somebody i don't else, want to trust you know? somebody else so she, i need yeah. to rely on yeah. myself knowing yeah. that whatever happens i know i can be out there and i know i can do this route and, and she may drop people too like what yeah. we found is like it's hard to keep up with her so mm. and and you know so she may have to be you know like especially on the, the climbs like you know because a lot of people they can you know they can run on the downhill but if you can't keep up on an uphill, you just can't keep up on an uphill. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. And so like, that was yeah. hard. Like on yeah. Calibron, we had a friend, I was like, Hey, you know, maybe you can help pace me. And so we met him out there and, and we were like, okay, so you're just gonna, the idea is like for you to just carry my pack and water. And so we were all started hiking up and this was just like a test run that we were doing. Yeah. And, and I ended up dropping him and, and, and at the end of the Decalibron loop, it was kind of like, well, shoot, like you can't, I really like wanted to have, her, needs to her be to have someone with her, but I just kind of realized she's in such good shape right now. It's just hard to, to find people that would really be able to not only be there, but to actually be sort of pacing her yeah, and so like carrying was, stuff for her. So, you know, so she's almost too fast for that. So she's kind of got to know it all. On I her just own, need to know it. And, but it doesn't yeah. take much. Like with today's technology, it doesn't take much. I need to you know, do it once or twice and get the route on my phone. As mm -hmm. long as I have the route on my phone and my phone doesn't die, like I'll be fine. You know, yeah. I'm not going to get terribly lost yeah. in the dark. That's really like, I hate the dark. Um, mm. But so, so that's, it's just, you know, this would be in like three weeks from now. And so really my comp, I, like, again, yeah. I, I, I'm i starting no with zero confidence. Yeah. I have no confidence. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I've been eating cake. Yeah. I've been at the beach. I've been at the level. So yeah. now I'm like trying yeah. to get back and I'm trying to yeah. hit these peaks hard. And, you know, we're actually going to head out tomorrow night um, and do uh, the Wilson group. We'll do Wilson Peak, Wilson, and then El Diente. And we're going to start at like- I'm hoping that'll build her confidence. Again. Yeah, and we're going to start at like 10 p.m. Me, you know? And so- <laughs> She's me way behind, no, her confidence will no, be high. Yeah. No, but, but we're, we're going to start at 10 p.m. We'll go through the night. So I think just like getting back out there and then spending some time in the saw watch again, I think that's all going to kind of help me. But right now, if you ask me if I can do it, I'll be, hell no. Mm. You know, I, I don't feel like I have the confidence. So and it is scary because, you know, like like I know she's got the speed and, and the numbers look good. But still, you just never know how you're going to react to that second day, you know, because like she was mm -hmm. definitely beat after this mm. 24 hours like that day. Like she was, she but, was tired. And, then, and I think yeah. about that, but then I think like, okay, I hiked out just fine. And then I stayed up oh, yeah. the rest of the up. day so and I'm trying to so yeah. it's like and if you knew you had to keep and going, if i knew if i knew i had to keep yeah. and that's like where I, I when i say like when i had my low on beer stat like i knew i was done like mm -hmm. i knew these were my last two peaks right. and i could kind of meander up you know quote unquote uh beer stat and kind of take my time so but you know somehow i did it and so i always that's kind of what i've been relying on lately is somehow i hope that i can just you know, my friends were just like, trust your training. You trained hard, you know, and I did, I trained really hard for the 24 hour thing. And so that's why I feel like I'm, I'm slacking a little bit because, you know, it's been what, 18 days since the 24 hour record. And I, 
I've been up a couple 14 ers since then, but you know, I, I, before my 24 hour record, I did 55 14 ers. And so, I mean, I have a lot under my belt. And so now I think I have like three or four since then, since, since the first. And so I'm just, you know, I just, I'm like, I gotta get back out there. So yeah, no, let your body rest. I think your body probably needed that and you needed the mental break. And I yeah. think you're going to do just fine. Are you kidding like, me? We need you here to be, just, I never say the right thing. Andrew's like, like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you only have three like, weeks what, to train. Whatever you just said, remember that. that was, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and I'm always like telling Andrew, I'm like, Andrew, do you think I can do it? Do you think I can do it? He's like, no, I'm like, ah, oh, I just need someone to tell me. I well, well, I just, I hear he that, does that like sarcastically. every, every he hears two it hours like every and I'm like, minutes. yeah, if I said, I think you can make it an hour ago, nothing's changed in the last hour. <laughs> you know, Mike Tyson paid someone to follow him around and say, you're the best champ. You're the best <laughs> champ. You're the best. Oh my God. And I think that's what you need, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> I just need, oh my gosh. I just need yeah, if only we had the money for that. Yeah, tell no. me I'm amazing oh, all go. the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys haven't actually said it, but I think you're talking about setting the record on Nolan's correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think she, she I think she's got the ability to do it, you know, yeah. but, but yeah. actually so we were going to like, I, I don't know, like, target like i don't know like a 48 hours just because it'd be cool to beat 48 hours mm-hmm. i thought that'd be really mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i mean we don't yeah. plan on beating joey's time <laughs> yeah yeah joey's time um, is, joey is yeah. i will never be in his yeah. league <laughs> but, but what but, is no. sabrina stanley's time i'm trying to remember oh, she's a 48 49 oh uh, yes okay nice so, so we'll so you're going for 48 down. yeah so I, I gotta be a little you know well we, we, with the spreadsheet you know it's like it's tricky, right? Because we want to, you know, it's funny. It's this mental game. You know, you mm-hmm. want to put in accurate times, but you want to put in times you can but beat. But you want so to pad them a little bit. So, happy, happy, yeah, happy. yeah, like so, I want to yeah. be able to beat my splits. Yeah. And so it was, it, it was funny. Andrew was like, come on, let's just take like a minute off of one to get it like 47, 59, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah, I was I like, like yeah, no, yeah, I right, like right. 48. And <laughs> if I beat 48, that's great. <laughs> but let's just keep it. And And so it is nice. Like, I do feel like, like that there, you know, I, I, how, how do I operate? I operate on beating my splits. So yeah. I don't, it's, if I'm up and, you know, if I'm three peaks in and I'm like 15 minutes behind my splits, that's when I start to be like, oh crap, I can't do this. I'm demoralized, even if it's just 15 minutes. So I have to have splits that are realistic and attainable and possibly beatable, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so we'll see. I'm not, you know, there's no promises with anything. And what's cool about Nolan's is that I don't have the pressure of needing to complete it. I know I can do it. And so it's already, for me, it's kind of, it's a, it's a done, I did it already. So it's not, it's not, there's not as much pressure as like, you know, I always do these because I want Andrew to be proud of me too. I always tell him, I'm like, I don't care about what anyone else thinks of me. I just like, want you, you to be proud this, of me. You are out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like... out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's, so I don't have the pressure of being like, well, I have to, you know, make Andrew proud in this regard, you know, I, cause I, you know, I, I do, I get, I, I thrive on, you know, feeling like, wow, I'm, I, you know, Andrew and I together, like we're amazing, you know, we're just this, I feel like we're just an amazing endurance couple. And I, and I like to make him proud of me. And I like to make him, I like hearing him tell me I'm amazing, Mm -hmm, (laughs) you know? mm -hmm. And so there's this pressure. You know, I like I like napping. Yeah, I like- <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> That's why support is perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know. From I what like- I hear, from what I hear, you don't like napping. Oh, that yeah, much. I know. Man, I'm so I'm always je- like I'm I'm finding that I'm really jealous. Like as I have to go off to another mountain, I'm like, man, I wish I was back on support crew because there were times when I sent Andrew off, and then I'd get to nap. You know, <laughs> yeah, bye. Yeah. Have fun in the dark and the cold. <laughs> you know, the grass so. is always greener. If I'm supporting yeah. oh, yeah. someone, I I'm, wish I was out there. And if I'm out there, I wish I was supporting. Oh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So so it's kind of nice with Nolan's. I don't have that 
feeling where like, oh, well, I'm trying to do this thing to see if I can do it. No, I can't do it. I've already done it. And we did Holy Nolans, you know? So totally. it's more of just like, this is a PR for me. Like, how can I improve my time? Is this doable? And I'm just going to see what I can do. And, and it might be a little rushed, you know, honestly, um, this year. Um, but um, but just, I'd hate to waste her fitness. You know, she's put mm-hmm. so much into mm-hmm. this year. You know, it'd be cool mm-hmm. if she could give it a shot while she's so mm-hmm. fit, you know? Yeah. And you're talking like a few weeks from now. Is that what you're thinking? End of August, beginning yeah. of September? September, yeah. September. Yeah, September um, there would be like, so I have a window um, where I have like a five day window from work. So that's, mm. uh, it's, it's like mid September. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's, it's like, bam, right in the middle of September. So, okay. Okay. So it's starting to get cold out there, but not too cold. Yeah. Well, and that was the other thing I was like, well, do I train all September and do it in October? But then I, I hate the cold. I'm trying to read this book on how to love the cold and I hate the cold. (laughs) So, and then you're talking little possible, possible snow. Definitely. October is like definitely later than I think you'd like, you know? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there was one year, Andrew and I just took a stab at it in October and we, and we bailed on, um, Harvard and then going down Harvard. Remember, it was just oh, snow, snow covered, covered. And or that was going down it Columbia, was just, um, over to Harvard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It took forever. It took I mean, it took us hours. like six hours yeah. probably to just. <laughs> yeah, that was so it was just you know, and that was a long time ago. Yeah. But um, but I'd rather not do it in cold, snowy weather. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. I've also got to ask: Does Wim Hof have you guys in ice baths yet? Well, no, 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 no. But I was thinking, oh, I should at least take a cold shower, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you guys aren't soaking in the ice yet. Not yet. Yeah. Have okay. you tried any of that? I have. Yeah. yeah. I, I really so, enjoy what's, it. Yeah. What's your take yeah. on it? Yeah. Did you? Did you? Uh, I mean, it's, it? did I what? Did you get better at it? Like, did it get uh, easier? Like, is, for is you? it more tolerable? It as you does. It does get more tolerable. It's same thing with the showers. You'll notice if you take a 30 second cold shower, then it, the next day or the next week, it's easier to do a minute and it goes on and on. You can sort of progress that way. But yeah, same thing with the ice baths or, or Alpine lakes. Um, it does get easier. I'm not trying to set any record. I'm not trying to beat Wim Hof's time or anything like that, but I feel like it's just really good for me mentally. And I get this really natural high than the norepinephrine. And I just feel wow. really, really good afterwards. So really? wow. I recommend it, but you yeah. know, the science is a little sketchy. So wow. yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I enjoy well, it though. It's funny. We did a bike ride like last year and we were out and our toes got both of us, our toes were numb. And we, not even thinking about it, we're like, hey, let's go hop in the hot tub. And so we jumped in the hot tub. And it was like the most, like, first Andrea got in, she was like I, crying. I cried. Like, it's painful. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and then I got in thinking, I, I waited a little while. I'm like, oh, okay, I better not do that. So I waited until I thought they were fine. And I got in and it still got me too. They were still a little numb, I guess. I just wanted to and die. And so we were like, you never do that again. And here at the beginning of the book, you're talking about what these guys go out in the cold, they get frozen, then they go in the sauna. And it was the same thing. And I was like, oh, maybe we're supposed to be doing that, you know, build up our tolerance. Mm -hmm. Like we're too soft, you know, we got to get tougher. So, yeah, Andrew's yeah. like, we need to go out and do and 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 do harder things. I was like, oh, come on, come on, how much harder does yeah. it get? <laughs> I will say the ice baths are a little bit easier if you do the breathing exercises first, oh, sort of get yourself oh, yeah. in the mental state, and yeah. uh, yeah, that oh, somehow yeah. makes it easier. But okay, yeah, yeah, we got like we're, we're like I said, we got like about halfway through the book, and then Andrea started nodding off like on the drive, so mm-hmm. we need to start finish the book but yeah okay. it's so good cool like, so good yep yeah. yep yeah cool. well awesome you guys thank you so much for sharing this adventure with me andrea congratulations yeah. um I, like i said yeah, thanks for having us on it's so fun to talk and, to you and tell the story yeah. and recap yeah. and yeah. it kind of helps us you know we love going back to listen to our podcast and so awesome. thanks for being interested yeah. in our stories it helps and, remember you know yeah. just us remember that. i love being the one to document this stuff so sure. if you got, do you guys have a website or have you ever thought about writing a book or anything oh, like oh, that in the future we are, we are gonna get a website going at some mm-hmm. point because because we we had well we had grand ambitions at one point but basically like us together like our instagram was like a2 summit so i think we're mm-hmm. gonna just have like a website mm-hmm. just to just keep track of some of our adventures yeah and stuff like yeah that, and you know? and yeah. i mean he's a but it's not there we yet. can put it together so yeah. we just need it's to we just need to yeah, sit eventually. down and and yeah. make it happen because yeah. it would be cool to have yeah. a 
have a site and recap yeah. all of our adventures and put the podcast on there. You know, it's oh. like, uh, you know, put the podcast link with the pictures, you know, oh, at cool. least. Yeah. Can we do that? Oh, that'd yeah. be awesome. Okay. Totally. So, yeah. Sweet. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, well, I can't wait to hear about Nolan's. I'm yeah. sitting on the edge of my seat already. So, oh, all right. Okay. Well, oh, all right. Oh, well, pressure. pressure. Yeah, pressure, I know. Pressure. Pressure. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not giving yeah. you any pressure. I'm not okay. doing that. Oh, but yeah, we'll if there's any pressure, stories right. at the end of this thing, oh, I want to yeah. hear them. Bring yeah, them here. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Uh, well, thanks so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I loved every minute of it. Anytime, you guys. You guys are always welcome. Thanks. Okay. okay, thanks a lot. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Talk Stay to you later. Yes. Bye -bye. Talk soon. Bye. See ya. Bye.